Today we are going to be talking about how we can combine n cloth with n hair to create a dynamic carpet. So let's uh, quickly get into it. So I'm going to start off by taking a simple primitive and this will be our plane. And let's uh, increase the dimension to somewhere like this. I think this will be a pretty good dimension for our carpet. And I'm also going to increase the subdivision amount to 40 by 40. I think that's a reasonable number to start off with. Now let's create our end cloth with this um, plane. So to create end cloth, I'm going to create, uh, go to end cloth and create end cloth. All right, it has created end cloth. It's falling down. Perfect. So let's uh, open up the outliner. If you don't have the outline, you can simply go to windows outliner. Select your nucleus and I'm going to simply turn off the gravity that will make our plane stay at the same place. I'm also going to be using the ground plane uh, in case it falls down with our other fields. So now to create a good property, the reason I've turned off the gravity because we are going to be using different fields uh, to create a dynamic cloth. So I'm going to go to my field and solver and let's click on turbulence. Now if I play this, you'll notice that some turbulence is slowly starting to take effect and now we have something like this. So I'm going to increase some strength on my turbulence to like 100. That's too drastic, but that will give us pretty nice effect. And uh, yeah, there you go. I think this will be pretty nice for me. I'm going to increase one noise level. Uh, maybe we'll get something different. Uh, maybe like, let's maybe keep it to somewhere about 75. And let's play this. 900 is good. All right. So uh, one thing to keep in mind, I'm not going to be creating the entire animation sequence of this cloth, but if you want, you can do that. Uh, I'm just going to be taking a still cloth uh, for the tutorial purpose, but because it's going to take a lot of time for the calculation. But if you want, you can simply create a catch uh, of both end hair and your overall end cloth. So I'm going to quickly create a catch for my uh, cloth and I think I'm going to hit escape. I think this much is enough for me. So I'm going to go to a frame where I find this. Good. That's I'm gonna to go to my 15th frame. I think this is looking quite good for me. And uh, again, I'm gonna select this and let's quickly delete the history. And there we go. So now we don't need all of this. We can get rid of this. And I think we do have some artifact left here. So I'm gonna quickly get rid of those. All right. So we are left with plane. It's uh, not animating. It's a static plane. Uh, but if you want to, you can uh, create the whole catch. I'm going to rename this to cloth. All right. So again, you want, you can create it, but it's going to take a lot of time for the calculation. So keep that in mind. Now, uh, the next process is obviously creating our end here. So you can go to end here and create here. And now you'll notice the process has started. Uh, now, in some instances, there are there is some possibility that your hair are not creating or not getting created. Uh, now, for those instances, I'm going to hit undo. Uh, because I've run into that problem in several times. So what you're going to do is you can simply select your plane, go to end cloth and uh, sorry, end here and you'll find paint hair follicles. Now open up the settings and uh, what is, uh, keep that in mind that hair follicle density is pretty high. So keep the numbers to pretty low to start off with before you know what's exactly uh, you're putting in your plane. So I'm going to keep it to keep it to 20 and 20 and 20 uh, for the density U and V and 20 for the points per hair and then start painting manually and now here you'll notice that we are getting a reasonable number of hairs which is looking pretty nice and we are getting equal number of hairs and the overall sim will look pretty perfect with this but let's say if you want more uh, hair than this then you can go for a higher number let's say i'm going to go for 30 and then again if i drag this now you'll notice that uh, it's taking a lot of time for the calculation because we have number of hairs so again, keep the amount to a reasonable number. If you are doing a final rendering or if you are going to be putting it on a big show, then uh, keep the numbers to pretty high. The calculation is obviously worth the time. But if you are doing it for just a still render, then don't keep it to pretty high. So I'm going to, so if uh, the end here doesn't work, creating here doesn't work, then you can manually paint everything on your plane itself. That would work as well. Uh, so for my case, I'm going to simply create N here and that will perfectly line up. Right. So now you'll notice that the end here here is pretty high. We don't want that. So if you want to create a furry carpet, this is a pretty high uh, lengthy hair. So I'm going to select my hair, go to end here and select the tool called scale hair tool. With this, you can simply left click and drag it down to somewhere about right here. And I'm going to keep to this. All right. Once you're done, let's open up our end hair system. 
Now with the system, uh, the first thing you want to do is increase the amount of uh, hair clump to maybe 100. And now you'll look, if you'll closely look at our hair, you'll notice that they are pretty pointy. So we have to fix that. Now to fix that, we have to go to hair with scale, open this, uh, sorry, uh, hair clump with scale and open this up. And uh, you'll notice that we have a nice ramp here. Uh, the one is controlling the overall uh, strength of your bottom part and one is controlling the top part. So here you'll notice that we are getting a 0.2 value. So I'm going to simply bring this up to the one. So now we have a linear um, graph here. So all our hairs are pretty equal. All right. Now I'm going to increase some thinning to 0.2 just so we can get randomization. And now if you want more hair clumps, then you can go for 200 now. But you'll notice that we have uh, our hairs are pretty gone because it's not withstanding the overall property here. Now to fix this, what you have to do is reduce the display quality to a lesser number. I'm going to keep it to somewhere about 60 so that I can keep the numbers to 200. You can go even lower if you want. This totally depends on you. Now it's not covering our entire plane, I believe. Uh, so what you can do is you can increase the overall clump width. I'm going to keep it to 0 0.300, but just in case if, if the, your hair is not uh, pretty much covering the whole plane, then you can use clump uh, width all right now moving on uh, the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to add a bit of a twist here uh, for the clump twist and i'm also going to increase some clump here so let's add a point here and maybe put in a value of maybe like 4.95 all right i think that's a pretty low number and uh, now we are getting a nice smooth curls now our hair are still dynamic keep that in mind they will still fall and since we have a lot of hair i'm not gonna uh, create a animation with this now the next thing i'm going to do is uh, make sure we have self collide turned on all right and in the turbulence let's give it a little bit of turbulence to maybe like 0.200 now i've already explained all of these parameters what all of these does in our video of introduction to n here but if you haven't checked it out make sure you check it out so you get the full understanding of how n here actually works now with this uh, we are pretty much good to go with the overall thing uh so there you go if you want your plane to be reacting with the plane what you can do is select your end cloth and create a passive collider of your cloth all right now um let's see how this is overall looking so i'm going to create a quick camera just for the visualization purpose and let's make the focal length to 80 and let's turn this on and let's lock our camera so let's see first uh, how our overall uh, entire scene is looking then we can get into the shading part so let's open up the ipr and uh, you won't see anything the reason is because i have my light turned off i believe all right and uh, let's update the full scene now let's get into the shading part so what i'm going to do is for the cloth let's start off with our cloth all right and i'm going to right click assign new material, Arnold and standard surface, all right. And uh, with standard surface, I'm gonna quickly take a preset called Velvet. This will give us a nice clothy texture. And for the hair system, I've already explained how you can create a Arnold hair system with native uh, and hair shading. So if you haven't checked it out, go check it out. It will help you with the overall shading part. I'm gonna quickly dive into it. I don't wanna explain the whole process again. So let's uh, quickly take our shader of standard hair. And I'm gonna take a preset of blonde. And since we have a basic color, a basic white color, we obviously don't want that if we look at the IPR. So let's increase the roughness to 8.5. So I'm gonna go to my base color and uh, Arnold and let's search for a ramp and let's select the AI RGB ramp. Now with this, I'm gonna quickly add a nice color to it. Maybe add a bit of a purple, some maybe blues in there and uh, let's maybe take a sage color. All right, I think that looks pretty good. And uh, if we now look at the overall render, increase the exposure amount here. Now again, if you are not satisfied with the overall shading, if you wanna play around here and there, what you can do is go to your base color and then start things around you can uh, and now you can see what you are getting uh, i'm going to just let it fall down just a little bit and then hold it there and let's see how this is looking pretty much it this is how you can pretty much create a very nice cloth and uh, hairy kind of scene with a magical 
hair simulation so again as a demonstration if you want to combine this stuff uh, what you can do is i'm going to get rid of the camera you can take a simple uh, end cloth uh, now let me just explain this quickly again uh, if the concept is not clear what you can do is you can maybe let's i'm going to take a uh, air bag and uh, yeah so select your nucleus use plane so let's see how this is behaving and air bag is looking quite good so again you can select your n hair create n hair and now we have created the hair and i'm going to quickly get rid of so many hair follicles since this is just a demonstration purpose and let's scale this thing down right and uh, for our hair system i'm gonna let's uh, where is the hair system yeah there you go let's reduce the quality let's increase some segments let's increase some thinning here maybe like 20 again and uh, let's maybe add some curliness here and there let's select self collide and in the dynamic turbulence sorry let's create a point to value and now if we play this now you have something like this so as you can see uh, the overall simulation is pretty heavy itself so keep that in mind it will fall it will animate but at uh, obviously calculation time it will take that much time to calculate so i'm gonna do a quick catch and just to showcase this all right i'm gonna reduce the number of hairs here just so it's a bit easier for us to visualize this or it's a bit easier for us to pretty much uh, uh, explain this concept All right, so we have created a small amount of catch and here you'll notice that we are getting this beautiful simulation. Uh, and uh, this is how you can pretty much combine your overall uh, property with this. Again, you have to play the whole thing again. So this is how you can pretty much do the overall animation of your end cloth and in here if you want to get that effect. So it does take a lot of time for the calculation. So make sure you have a reasonable amount of your polygon and your in here. Alright, so that's it. Uh, enjoy creating some hairy cloth stuff and I'll see you next time.